Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We talk everything animation here, including Rick and Morty, which we're going to be getting into today. I'm Dylan Heisen, and today I'm joined by Delaney Stilvall. Hey, y'all. And Michelle Ander. Hello. Today, Delaney, Michelle, and I will be discussing the fourth episode of Rick and Morty Season 3, Vindicators 3, The Return of World Ender. Uh, we talk... We. <laughs> Oh, there's a lot to get into with that title. There's a we'll, lot to get yeah, into. We'll that talk. Time. We'll talk about that later. But um, yeah, we talk Rick and Morty twice a week here on the Overly Animated podcast during the season. You can check us out at overlyanimated.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes by going to overlyanimated.com/slash/itunes for our main feed, or you can find our Rick and Morty specific iTunes feed by searching Overly Animated Rick and Morty. Uh, thank you guys once again last week for tuning in in high numbers to our podcast. Everyone's very excited about uh, Rick and Morty, um, and uh, we are as well, especially Vindicators Three. So let's get into it. Um, Delaney, here's the first question. Did you like Vindicators 3, The Return of World Ender? And how did it compare to the first two Vindicators? That's my question. Oh, okay. Um, well, I don't think it's as good as the first two Vindicators. <laughs> you, like... gotta, you gotta defend that claim. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, it's just, I don't know, like, plot and, like, characters. Okay. I mean, they killed they killed off three POC characters. Yeah. Like, that's yeah, not okay. true. <laughs> Yeah, but wouldn't that mean you're not a fan of the second Rick's one? Okay, anyway. Well, I guess the, I'm not a fan of the second one, okay, I guess. There you go. What, okay, what do you the think of The first one was the best, obviously. <laughs> yeah, that, that was the big event of the summer, yeah. We all know right, that. Right, right. Yeah. The third one's like, I mean, the third, like, I mean, I guess the third one's a little bit better than the second one. I just didn't, I just didn't feel it, you know? Okay, like, did you, I just, but just weren't feeling it. Did you not feel this episode? I, I really didn't. Okay. I mean, I liked it. It's, I don't think it's awful. I think, I mean, it's hard. How do you come off of Pickle Rick? Like, yeah. how, do, how do you, like, how do you, how do you, like, how do you go up after Pickle Rick? I mean, Rick? I guess you um, do, I guess you do an Avengers parody. That's what you do. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I don't, like, I don't hate this episode. I, I just, like, this wouldn't be in my top. Again, there's not really, there aren't really bad episodes of Rick and Morty. I just wasn't, like, it was fine. Um, I think it just got a little repetitive i think there's some good undercurrents and the characters are interesting but i think it just this might be the most trivial and like kind of tropious like i know rick and morty likes to take stuff and then just take it to absurdity but i think they just kind of lost me on this episode a little bit um the heroes weren't really like super interesting like it was like funny like a mil- like i mean a million ants man is like hysterical <laughs> like that's great and then but the rest of them were just kind of like eh. Yeah, okay. I think the only really compelling part of the episode is really like the Rick and Morty stuff, like the they're kind of like the tension there. But yeah. I, it was fine. I didn't hate it. Like it was, this I guess this might be the pitfall of the parodies. The pitfall, the the worst parody, or like the low point of um doing a parody at yeah, all. Yeah, both. Okay, maybe. Mm, okay, harsh, harsh. <laughs> Ooh, so Matt on this episode, Michelle, do you agree? I have just I have a question first though. Okay. Wait. So is Million Ants Man power that he can see like a person, or is that <laughs> Wait, the ants work together to have I like a kind of sad ants. body? Like, His power is that it. he's a million ants <laughs> as a person. He's just, he's just <laughs> oh man! Why are you questioning this? I it's very simple. Kind of great though. <laughs> So I think like, I think he's, he's like the best that. part of the episode is Million okay. Ants Man. Like you, well, the train, the soul, the, the train guy's pretty because that's yeah. also like the randomest power, just calling trains. trains to make holes and stuff in the wall. I guess who you got? Who you got? Million Ants or Ants and Myers Johnson? Oh, Ants and Myers Johnson, way better. Ooh. It's just so much more memorable. What about you, Delaney? That's before uh, no, Ants- I have to go with oh. Million Ants. Man. Million Ants. Oh man. <laughs> Why? Because there are more I ants. Just, I got it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it. like yeah, a million ants, ants compared to like a ants, few ants. ants. Yeah. Yeah. No. Exactly. That's how that works. Yeah. Delaney's just a big ant fan. So no. Okay, Literally. Michelle, what do you think of the episode? I thought it was fine. Um, I mean, it. it was, yeah, it wasn't bad. Out. No, there were a lot of really good parts, but like I also agree. Like I don't think this is quite as good as Pickle Rick. The ending though was like very satisfying to me though. Yes, that's <laughs> my hopes up for like an actual like feeling, and then it was oh, it's so good. All I right, just ripped uh, it away. Michelle, was it a satisfying <laughs> like, ending oh my God, because this you're is so great. this is even better than having a real moment? <laughs> <laughs> was it so satisfying because you're a big fan of Logic? Logic at the end, the rapper in the episode. My brother was a fan. He okay. was happy with this that. This is a real person, if we're unaware. This was a real <laughs> yes, rapper. Yes, no, my yeah. brother was yeah. like, I can't believe they have Logic, and yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> 
Like I under oh, I, that- I understood it was a real person, but like I have no like other I, feelings about. Yeah, logic. I, have, I have no accounts of that, but yeah. So, yeah. Damn. Okay, so you you so you're mad, but you enjoyed the ending a lot. Okay. Um. Yeah. I I think it's a good episode. I think that all Rick and Morty episodes are good. Obviously. Um. This is probably the worst of the season. Um. I'm I'm generally where you guys are with this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it it was fine. It was at times pretty funny. Um, overall, I, I agree with Delaney. This was like our most, uh, tropey, our most, uh, preset type of episode. Kind of went all according to script here. I, the big subversion is that Rick is the villain. I think that's one of the most interesting parts of it. You get into interesting stuff with Rick and Morty interacting. Um, every- None of us predicted that either, that that was going to be what the episode was about, which is kind of nice. Yeah. And that was in the trailer too. We saw like a world ender stringed up, but we still didn't really understand. No, it was so, him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, we were still trying to figure out what was Pickle Rick and what wasn't Pickle Rick. That's yeah. so true though. It's pretty, it's pretty funny if the, if they had like the preview video on Adult Swim for this and, um, they're all like, it's, it's time for our best villain ever. World ender. He's going to be this huge villain this season. Yeah. And they just played that straight, that whole preview video. But no, he does not even a person in the in the episode um yeah no i think i think i think it's a good episode i think there's parts that are really funny um i will say i really wasn't into it the first time um but re-watching it got better like there's a lot here so i think i think that this episode is potentially one that gets better if you watch it a few times because um there's like even just some lines towards the end which you don't even hear they're just so there's i mean sometimes the show's humor just goes by so quick but um there's some of the dialogue uh with the marriage stuff uh at the end is really good yeah. and you just can't I'm glad you wrote that yeah down, I, I was like wait what did he describe his penis as i couldn't <laughs> catch it either time i watched it <laughs> i wanted to know but i couldn't understand because it was yeah fast. yeah for the record half ghost half tumescent penis yes there you go that's that's what he i did I didn't even I didn't even catch that. That's yeah. yeah, I was like half what and yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. This seems important. Yeah, I think I just I sometimes I wish this go the show would give its uh its lines more time to breathe. Like that's that's that whole exchange between the three of them is so good. That's one of the highlights of the episode. But you it I just did not get it at all at first and the, the next few times turned on closed caption and got it. So um, Oh okay. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, there's, there's definitely some great moments this episode. I think the best part is the, uh, Israel Rick, uh, drunk Rick gag. Yes, I think that's, that's pretty, pretty good. Yeah. That's like number, that's like uh, very funny. So, um, like that was like laugh out loud funny. I think the exchange between the three of them was very funny. Uh, the ending is just really random and dumb, but, um, like I love bringing Gearhead back. Uh, we're potentially mourning Gearhead today, although we'll talk about that. <laughs> is, is Gearhead dead? <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I just, there's, there's really a lot here in this episode and, um, it's not as obviously good, I think, as the last two. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't know if everyone agrees that the last two episodes were incredible, but I think all of us here kind of think that they were, they were really good. And this one, it's probably not as good, probably not as clever, but still very good. And also, um, it sneaks up on you a little bit. So, uh, I, I'd, rec- I'd recommend to rewatch, but, um, yeah, so at, at, at its core here, we have an Avengers slash Guardians of the Galaxy parody episode. Um, kind of going for both. I, I feel like, I feel like they, like, they assembled. We have that whole thing. Well, considering the literal Vindicator symbol is like basically an upside down Avenger symbol. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, that part's definitely the Avengers. Yeah. And then we also, I feel like Maximus is Star Lord, but also like they say, um, they, at the very beginning of the episode, it's some Guardians of the Galaxy reference. Like he, he says something similar. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, like once again something that was more probably more timely before but um yeah here's how it is delaney how do you think how do you think they were in um do you think they're successful in their lampooning of avengers here i think so um i think the best part i guess was like kind of like one just all the ridiculous absurd powers and then yeah kind of how they interacted and like i think when them falling apart was probably the funniest bit. I think it was most successful when the first obstacle in Rick's death plan was like him mocking them for yeah. how unoriginal they are. Yeah. I think that's probably that really the great. best part. Yeah, all of them apply to all of you. Yeah, so that was. I think it's just so hard in that like doing superhero things. And like again, I love superheroes. Like I, I love that stuff. Like I am all about DC. Like I have seen all the Avengers movies. Like I love superheroes. It's all cool. So I understand uh, Marvel and DC are different, and Avengers is Marvel. Before so, people yeah, start so, going, so, DC, not Avengers. So, did, so did you did okay. you did you hate this episode <laughs> because it was not a parody of DC and it was a parody of Marvel? Is that what you're saying? 
No. I'm... <laughs> oh, that's not what you're saying. Uh, no, okay. Marvel, Marvel deserves it. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. I, what I don't like, I, it just, it's just, it's a tired thing to do. And especially with all the movies we have and how, how ingrained in popular culture it has become, there are so many parodies. So I don't really think it does really anything new other than just murdering all of them. But that's just kind of like, I'm, I was expecting that. So. Yeah. I, I yeah. agree. I agree with that. What do you think, Michelle? Um, I am not. I am like the opposite of Delaney. I know nothing really about Marvel and DC universes. Like, I'm a very. I've seen like maybe two movies in the last like five years about. Yeah, but it's, 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 Wonder Woman. It's, so. it's so like culturally pervasive, though. So you still have, like it, a it sense. It really right? is. Yeah. So for me, as someone who like can't get the like a lot of the references like right off the bat, what I appreciated was how ridiculous they made all the powers yeah. for most of them. Because that was just like I'm glad they didn't just like harp. I'm like, oh, this person's so cool. It's like, no, this is like he's literally a million ants, you guys. This is like all he is. And then they all died, which. I mean, that's not original, but it was like, what else did you expect from a Rick and Morty episode? Very gory deaths, especially that first dude. He was like being <laughs> murdered in that vent for like minutes. Yeah, it was that was it was pretty it was pretty brutal here. Um, I don't think there's a lot to get with the parody. I think it was mostly yeah. just that it was conceptually an event. Yeah, it was just yeah. like superficially oh, this yeah. parody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah you're right. Let, let's go through the like all these all these. Uh, uh, the vindicators, the side characters here. So I think, cause that's the highlight, the, their ridiculousness, their powers. Um, the leader is Supernova, um, voiced by Gillian Jacobs. We're bringing back all the community vets. It's great. Um, back, not really back, but you know, but, uh, yeah. So, uh, Delaney, I assume you're a fan of Supernova. Um, yeah, I mean, well, until the end, I guess. And I was like, oh God, she's like, <laughs> yeah, she's like kind of a villain at the end. Yeah. Quite yeah. Simple. She's basically, yeah. I, she, I mean, she's she's Starfire. That's like who she is, and I guess they like smashed her into Gamora, some way. But <laughs> she's not like she was fine. What is she exactly? She says she she's, so. She like says a, she's a fallen star. She says the baby okay. was half fallen star. Was, yeah, but like okay, so is that what she is? Because she also kind of looks like her whole body is just like one galaxy. I guess she's like a I supernova. Like yeah, it's. <laughs> Yeah, that was the least clear what they were to me. The other character is pretty straightforward. We, yeah, pretty straightforward. we explain what the crocodile is. I think she has the most interesting character design. Yeah, I think her design is cool. Yeah, well, I sometimes I just like watch like the stars move across like her thigh up her torso. It was just very mesmerizing. <laughs> oh, you so you're staring at her thigh <laughs> in her gay. torso. Okay. Yeah, that was pretty gay. Yeah, that was really homosexual. Moving around. Okay, anyway. <laughs> well, I think she's like she's Starfire and Raven. Like that, that's who she oh, is. Yeah the raven yeah because she was like star mother and it was like what the heck are you okay <laughs> yeah they were trying to Ridiculous. they started out with her parodying something specific and yeah. then it just really didn't really do anything it was like i don't even know what you are okay yeah. um i think as you said she's she doesn't really stand out with the ridiculousness of these other ones but she's like the straight man here she's um yeah like gillian jacobs does some great straight man work introducing these other ridiculous people because she's the one giving the speech in the beginning of the episode um so i feel like it's uh kind of uh under the surface how how uh, good this character is um, wasn't that the joke because like too like the first like saw like game or whatever um like when they have the names under them like what they represent and hers is like uses powers responsibly yeah yeah i think yeah it's supposed Slimly. to i think it's supposed to apply to all of them too but yeah it's it's yeah she's so yeah i think she's i don't know if she's gonna be anyone's fave right but um so like, oh do, uh do, michelle delaney picked her fave million ants who's your fave here Oh man, I kind of like the train guy just because it's like such a weird specific a power. It makes, it makes no sense how to get those chains. Like, how did they become like enchanted with <laughs> ghosts of trains? Trains don't have like an afterlife, do they? You don't it's understand just, like, ghost train guy? I like how you ask, do they? Do like, they? Like, <laughs> you're, like, you're unsure. What do you, yeah, what do you... I have questions. That's why I'm intrigued. That's why he's my favorite. Okay, so you've, you want to know more about Alan Rails, the ghost train guy. Alan Yep. Oh my god, I didn't know that was his name. Alan was Rails, his name. voiced by Lance Reddick. I think Lance Reddick did a great job with this role, but um, I know he's I, great. Yeah, like, it's his, so his character is really good. Um, just see. Yeah, just uh, continually uh, ghost trains being the only thing about him, um, and then at the end, uh, formerly married to Supernova, <laughs> and then s- susses out. Uh, that was a plot twist. <laughs> <laughs> that was a plot twist. <laughs> 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 
interpersonal drama. Yeah, um, but he's he's great when he's mad at the end when he's fighting with. Uh, I thought, I, that might have been parodying um, the big shock in uh, Avengers. Uh, so, do people hook up that, in Avengers? That Hawkeye is married. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, that's that's true. That that's what that could be. Um, also the like conflict at the end. Um, like he's, I mean, uh, yeah. Who are the, is, do we think uh, Alan Rails is anyone specifically here? I'm not sure. Um, like no, like uh, Million Ants is like gonna be like Ant Man, right? Um, Vance Maximus is will be like uh, either Tony Stark slash uh, the yeah slash Star Lord, slash Star -Lord right? So, um. Yeah, I, I think uh, Alan Rails is great. Ghost Rains are great. I also he might be the actual most original. <laughs> yeah, he might be. I mean, he only has but, one thing, but but I mean, it's better than just literally being ants, right? Oh, better? How could you be better than literally being ants? Yeah. So we have Million Ants, who is <laughs> just a million ants. Um, uh, either voiced by Tom Kenny or Maurice Lamarch. I'm not 100 sure from the credits, but um, yeah, I think um, best part of the episode, maybe like contender, is. I lost 400 ants. Yeah. Now I am back to 1 million ants. <laughs> yeah. That might be like, I mean, the queen queen of the top moment of the episode. Eggs. Yeah. Yeah, I did love, I did I love like, that line. That? Yeah. Just that, that's a great moment. Um, and then the, uh, when uh, Gillian Jacobs was like, uh, the baby died because it was half <laughs> fallen star, that half was million ants. Yeah. That was incredible. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's the two great uses of uh i don't know who, who on the writer staff like just loves ant jokes like this is a thing now yeah i mean it's a thing like who is it who's like their thing is like ants okay we want an ant joke in this and episode they're okay two, like they're, they're you're, you're, you're a person body covered this is my time to shine yeah. i have so many for i guess ants are just very funny we didn't i never really knew this but um we, we have two great ant characters now so we should just keep having ant characters I guess I guess this is just like I'm okay with it. why is it million ants? But why is there Ant Man? That's just as ridiculous of a person. So it is. That's a good question. <laughs> I don't know if million ants is that much more ridiculous. <laughs> than just... Who was your Who was your fave though, Dylan? Oh, definitely million ants. Yeah, it's it's really? yeah, yeah. Both of you. Okay. I also love. He loves Ant Samaj Johnson. Yeah, I mean, I, I love Ant Samaj Johnson too. I also love Alan Rez. I also love Supernova, and I also love uh, Crocubot. Um. Crocubot, I couldn't remember his name. Uh, I couldn't remember his name either. Yeah, uh, Crocubot uh, was, uh, yeah, more uh, hmm, seeing more crocodile than than robot here yeah. at the end. Um, yeah, just uh, very straight up answering Rick's questions about what he is in the beginning. <laughs> yes, so I am Crocubot. That was just really great uh, timing in that first scene. Um, didn't really do as much with him, but I think uh, that's a great concept. Uh, with with Crocky about there, and then we have uh, Vance uh, slash Maximus. I forget, let's we can find his full name here, but uh, Van yeah, just Vance Maximus Renegade Star Soldier. Oh my god, that's such an awful name. Vo voice <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. That's the best part about him is his oh name. Yeah, voiced by Christian. Yeah, it is the best part about him. <laughs> his name's very good. Voiced by Christian Slater. I think his best moment in the beginning is um the uh it was happy hour and then uh, Rick's response. So, yeah, because yeah. uh, I was also no, uh, I was also late mind. because of my drinking and mentioned it to <laughs> zero applause. Um, not yet. Yeah, not as many uh, overtly comedic moments for Vance Maximus, but um still just a good parody of that uh, cocky type of character. No, no comments here. On Vance. He's fine. He died yeah, early on. Fine. He died early on because they didn't know what else to do with him. Yeah, he was the first, the first dad. <laughs> yeah, that's. I guess that's kind of a subversion on its own, right? Um, and then, yeah, because he would be like the hero, maybe. Yeah, he's he he's like, like the leader, the but I do like that they made Supernova like the the leader. That was nice. Um, but yeah, and then we have uh, everyone's favorite vindicator, Noob Noob. Yep. So he was an actual vindicator. I thought he was like an intern. I love him. Because his name's Noob Noob. So is he related to Mr. Poopy Butthole? Yeah, that's the real that's question. The, that's the obvious that's question. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why we couldn't that have just been Mr. Poopy Butthole. We did Noob Noob Noob. No, it needed to be a different one. It needed to be Noob Noob. Uh, he's his own noob. I, I love. I do like the concept of Noob Noob him laughing at Rick's jokes and then bringing him back at the end. That was great. Um, with like, it, it, was, it just killed me. The so end was just amazing. It was yeah. noob, noob, oh not Morty. God. I do think we've seen this character before, though, so it lost some of its impact because this is literally just Mr. Poopy at all. Um, so I don't think Noob Noob stood out as much as. We no, I think because he looks like Mr. Poopy at all, that's why it worked. Because you already immediately loved him. <laughs> yeah, he does have inherent sympathy. That's true. I you agree. were like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I, I do agree with that. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I think this is the use of Noob Noob. I agree, it was confusing, he was like, uh, 
like an intern vindicator, but he was go. The key was he was going on his first uh, thing until he had to clean up yeah. Rick's diarrhea. That like that was that like tied it together at the end because like it's like drunk Rick expected him to be there because uh, to set so it, set up the trap. Um, the episode really does tie together. They do have a lot of things like that to pay off. Um, but yeah, noob noob, uh, noob noob, not Morty at the end, and they're like the same height, I guess, so it accepts Morty. <laughs> but uh, it's so good, yeah. I think that was a good one. Okay, so let's go. Um, okay, so the other, the other, other than just going through the Vindicators, the other topic I would want to talk about is uh, the use of Rick as a villain here. So, uh, like, it's it's not uh, World Ender. Oh, before that, speaking of World Ender, let's talk about this title. So, Vindicators Three. We're like, okay, why is this Vindicators Three? It's because Vindicators One and Two happened. I just I love the gag of Vindicators One having happened, but we didn't see it. But it was like yeah. they they referenced it. That was the big hit of that summer. But now we're moving on to Vindicators Two. Um, I think that's a great, that's a great gag here. And they just never explain it. And then, uh, they missed Vindicators through two. So now this is Vindicators three. Um, and like how hurt Morty is. Yeah. It's so Morty's good. That he got left out. Yeah. Yeah. And then when he's reading it and he's like, they killed off, like, <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. Uh, and, but the other part of this title, the return of world ender, I have questions. Why is this the return? Was he the villain of Vindicators one? Um, he might have maybe been. he's not. Yeah. He's not the villain of Vindicators Two. Yeah, he was not no. the villain of Vindicators Two. So I was confused why this is their turn. They do say the return. Maybe. They do say he's back in the beginning of the episode when um, Supernova is giving a speech. But anyway, very convoluted title here. Um, so what do we think of Rick being the villain here, not World Ender? Um, is this a progression down the darker themes of the season, as promised by Rick earlier? Is this the most overtly villainous Rick has been? Um, what did you think of this in relation to, uh, what we've, uh, Michelle, what do you think of this in relation to what we've seen of Rick before? I mean, I think, I think it makes perfect sense. I don't know if it shows like a worse side of him or not. Cause he's always like talked about not caring about people and having no loyalty and especially disregarding people he thinks are a lot dumber than him. So I think it's like, it's like on par with what we've seen. I honestly loved it. Like, <laughs> the saw stuff was like working for me and i was like actually kind of invested and be like you guys you need to shoot two more hoops you need to stop talking shoot the hoops <laughs> me too no i was like i was like yes yeah. same the whole time like that's why i missed all that dialogue i was like just yeah i was like you guys <laughs> and like the fact that he was so drunk like him being drunk was like I thought it was like play, played really well and it was super convincing and it was like hilarious. Like he was so plastered and he still was like making this amazing, like he was doing all these things and he was calculating everything. He threw a party while he like couldn't see straight because he was so hammered. I think that is like, oh, that's so good. And just like when he like kind of gives up around the third or fourth way, he's like, like, oh, it just, just like shoot some hoops and like talk about why you're selfish or something. Okay, bye. It's just like he like really doesn't care, but so much is at stake. I just I thought that juxtaposition worked really really well. I love seeing Rick like that. Yeah, I do think it's very funny. He's like uh, just, just just shoot some three pointers or whatever. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, close my eyes for sick. Don't worry about and he, it. He like recorded fine. all the sound effects that would play when it went in. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a lot of work to get down there. Yeah, what do you th- what do you think about this topic, Delaney? Um, so I agree with Michelle in that I think the best part is, like, how drunk he is. I don't really think this is a progression of dark Rick. This is, like, the progression of drunk Rick. We've <laughs> never actually seen Rick, like, this shit-faced before. Like, he is absolutely just drunk out of his mind. He can't remember it. I didn't think Rick could get blackout drunk. Like, I didn't think that he was capable, but, like, oh boy, is he. Um, <laughs> like, I do think this is on par. Like, I don't, like, I wasn't really shocked. Like, when they were, like, I was already thinking when they were walking in, and I was like, I bet Rick did it. And then I was like, I'm not shocked. <laughs> and then the fact that he recorded everything, I think it was, like, I thought it was great. It's probably, like, the best concept in the whole episode. And I think it was well done. And I, I do, I mean, we, I don't think, I don't think it's so much evil Rick, but kind of going down this kind of spiral of Rick, you know, him being depressed and drunk. And, like, there's still that undercurrent there even though it was it was real but it wasn't about rick being upset about how morty like loves the vindicators and like that conflict yeah i i, I agree there's been this uh, there's been a little bit of like a, a wise rick so evil discourse going on today in the av club review um i think this is in line with what we've seen from him before it's certainly he's not really evil he's just a dick yeah yeah that's yeah. what i got from the episode like and that's the thing that kind of cemented it for me because i think i kept hoping that the season like 
Rick was gonna analyze himself more. But then, like, that reveal with Noob Noob at the end, I was like, oh my god. Like, the show made me think something emotional was gonna happen, <laughs> and it took it away. He's just He's just really awful, but not because he's trying to be. He's just a dick. He just doesn't have the same realization. Yeah, it's like, damn, that's like just as damaging, but like way more funny. Like, there's no intent there. Like, he doesn't give a shit. Yeah, he doesn't care. That's (laughs) that's so amazing. Like, there's no intent. Like, obviously, like, he killed people and it's terrible. And like, he's not a good person, but like, I still wouldn't even say Rick's evil. He's just like awful like he's just the worst yeah i i generally agree with this i think the direction where this is a somewhat of a, a somewhat of a progression is with relation to morty's view of him because this is it like is. the most pissed morty's yeah, been at rick yeah it is so i think that's notable like he's just went against morty potentially more than he has before in this episode um Morty just like very clearly loves the Vindicators. And, um, I think that we've kind of been dealing with the past few episodes. We've been back to like earnest, wide eyed Morty. But this episode, this was, um, I don't want any more of your, uh, shit, Rick, uh, Morty. Like this was, he was just like, it's like, okay, now it's a neutrino bomb. Okay. This is Rick's uh, spiel about Israel. Like this is, it was, uh, Morty very much in his element in dealing with, uh, it, with Rick at this point. And, um, I this is I wonder if this is a turning point for Morty if this is where we're going like I feel like we asked this last season too and it didn't pay off but um like is just more well, I think it's a carryover yeah it's 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 yeah, it's yeah. potentially a progression like uh, is Morty just going to be fed up with Rick now I mean I feel, we see it here and there like we've always seen it I I'm it has seem seemingly it has seemed to get worse but I think it's also going in line with like how much Rick is spiraling so I think mm-hmm. we may be progressing. I don't think we're going to get an immediate payoff for it, but no. I think like there could be there could be deeper levels to this that come up later in future episodes. I do wonder if this is taking us on a on a path towards Evil Morty returning. Ooh. Oh please. man, though, yeah, I would like to see that. I mean, Morty straight up shot Rick. Like he had every intention of just killing him. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I will say we have an episode later in the season called Tales from the Citadel. Um, the other episodes don't seem mm-hmm. plot re- relevant, but um, I, I, I'm, I'm wondering. Well, if, you know, even Morty. From I'm also season... okay if that's like Tales of Boston Say. Like I'm okay. With that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my yeah, God. that's what the show would do. It'd be Tales of Boston Say. Yeah, I'm sure. But um, from uh, Star Lost and Airbender. Um, but uh, yeah. So I think I think that's we'll keep let's let's uh let's keep track of Morty's fed up inness with Rick. But I did love Morty this episode. Um, him just being like, okay, this is what drunk Rick does. I thought that was very funny. Um, no, it was really good. Well, he's like. When he was like, "There's a forty percent chance it's a dud," yeah. but <laughs> he was there stand back in me. Yeah, it's like since when is Morty the smart? But like he's he just he's just see, seen it many times before. Yeah, that thing. You're like you're like, damn. So Rick has been like shit faced a lot. Yeah. We just like haven't seen that in the show. Yeah, there's a lot a lot referenced this episode. Like, how did you know? He's like, it's too many times, Rick. Too many. Too times. many times. So it's yeah. just like. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Too many times. There's a lot referenced this episode that um, didn't we have really we didn't see on screen from previous episodes. So I thought that was particularly notable. I mean, other than Vindicators one, we also had a lot of times uh, we had a lot of times with um, with Morty and Drunk Rick, and then we also had this uh, punch card for um, the free. That was the, so yeah, good. Adventure. Yeah, uh, Rick, Morty invokes his right to choose one out of every ten Rick and Morty adventures. <laughs> Morty, it's the Morty adventure card. I love that concept. That's great. That's a good way to make someone go on adventures yeah. they don't want to go on. That's such a good incentive. <laughs> Rick, yeah, Rick's just like, okay, sure. He's, I mean, he's upset about it, but um, he, you think you think Rick wouldn't be controlled by the system he put into place? But no, no, I mean Morty, though, because then he has to go in like nine. Oh yeah, it's definitely, it's it's definitely where it pays off. That's so brilliant. Definitely a Rick controlling Morty vehicle, but I love them bringing that in here. Okay, let's go through the the specific lines from the episode. Um, we referenced a lot of them but um in the beginning we haven't talked about the uh, sterilizing alien slugs so good uh don't let them get away uh and then at the end where you might want to free some of your sperm after a birth when he's time. like well they're like why don't we just kill him it's like who, what, <laughs> then i won't be able to sterilize an entire species yeah that, that's kind of a classic or conmordi intro i like that concept though um, the Vinda Beacon, as frequently discussed here as the, from the trailer. Uh, Rick's, I refuse to answer a literal call to adventure, Marty. Uh, I think that's a good line. I think that's just still, like, even though we've seen, I've seen that line so many times and I still just, it's so good. It's still really good, yeah. Uh, we did one. It was the big event of the summer. Let it die. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good yeah the uh the, the uh, morty adventure card i love it yeah morty's like read them and weep yeah 
uh, we're doing adventures too. And that was the, that was the pre credits. Um, and then he shot. Yeah. Uh, we talked a lot about the supernova, uh, briefing in the beginning. Um, just Rick railing on, uh, Crocubot. Uh, you fell into a vat of redundancy. And then, uh, uh, Noob Noob's like, uh, God, God damn. Like, Noob Noob. Did that actually, so his weird. reaction was really funny to me. I was like, who is that? I'm like, I don't care. I love it. No, it was so good. It was so yeah. good. Yeah, Noob, yeah, Noob, <laughs> Noob Noob says the same thing like three times. It's great every time. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Noob Noob. This guy gets it. <laughs> yeah. I was so good. Talking about, um, Vaximus's introduction. Uh, sorry, I'm late. Uh, I also late because of my drinking and uh, mentioned it to zero applause. Oh, that's another line we saw a few times from the preview, but I still think it's really right. funny. Yeah. But in context, it's way funnier. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, the, did he, did he say never forgets a kid? Um, that's, that was so good. Oh my God. No, I just <laughs> made the, the, I mean, I do think, I don't think this episode is as good as the previous two. But I do think this one might be more laugh out loud funny than the previous two. Yeah, it might have been. There were a few moments like this. And just yeah. like in just straight one liners. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think it's probably not like as great. Like just railing yeah. on everybody yeah. was hilarious. Yeah. I I agree. Um and uh I, I think I, I that line is still funny, did he never forget to also from the preview. But I was I was expect I was kept expecting another uh Maximus uh like child muster joke in the episode and it never paid off, but <laughs> that was that was enough, I guess. <laughs> Um, do you say never forget to get? I guess we're we're not going back to that place from the Mesex episode. <laughs> so good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think maybe that was a memorable place. Well, yeah. later he was like, "You're the like learning dis- like yeah, disability kid that we take pictures yeah. with." Oh, I was yeah. like, oh my god! <laughs> oh yeah, wow, maybe you if you're tie- tying those lines together, get darker. But yeah, they, yeah, I thought I love that railing on Morty. He's like, uh, yeah, he's just being nice for like this nice guy superhero image. Um. I love, uh, yeah, when we were talking about Rick Rayleigh on them, oh, looks like he found his crowd. Pretty toothless stuff, guys. Um, commenting on Maximus's humor. Yeah, I think that was pretty good. Um, later we're in the, like, bedroom. Um, Lady Katana, Calypso, and Diablo Verde <laughs> were killed in, <laughs> Diablo Verde. <laughs> were killed so in, uh, uh, yeah, Vindicators too. Um, things did feel less diverse in there. Um, they murdered three innocent heroes of color and they still had to bring me back. Um, etc <laughs> that yeah. was the, the, like that entire scene was just like oh my god i, I definitely like them lampshading the these this like it's lack so of good. diversity things yeah. in the marvel movies i guess that is a specific parody right is the uh, yes you could, you could say that no they just like completely just slaughtered them yeah it was great uh vindicating comfort about the sheets um it's a good line uh this new pay, pa system our most tr- oh my god <laughs> you- i kind of liked that too though it was really funny it was so awkward but i really liked it so it's our most straight justin roiland just like stammering on into the microphone bit um that we've had in a while but um is yeah i don't know that was those I, I wasn't in love with it but um it's classic rick and morty <laughs> the the it's so it's a like i guess their pa systems are sentient because it wasn't a guy talking on a pa system right it was no i like i think they're making fun of like jervis okay yeah yeah, yeah. okay so that, that's another specific parody maybe we were wrong in the beginning you're right that's a good call there um we didn't really do that much with that but that, that's that's good yeah um noob noob having to clean up rick's diary i didn't didn't enjoy seeing oh <laughs> seeing all of that no i think i thought it was like hilarious though like he would do that yeah also, the fact is, he was so drunk, <laughs> and he later went jokes. in there purposefully to shit everywhere. Did he? I don't know. Was that? Oh, he, oh maybe yeah, yeah, because he's maybe in, no. he did because it was like a very specific place. Yeah, he's in his. Like, I don't at think the he end, was filming in there. Because at the end, the last scene of recorded Rick, we see right what Delaney said was he like he, talks about he was he in the she was in the shed. The he's like, oh, I got uh, and, and I just shot my pants. So he must have specifically teleported yeah, I think to that location. Right. I think yeah, he like yeah. yeah, he did that. Intentionally. I don't know. He would do that. Yeah, I mean, he just might have been trying to get back. Well, before he passed out, uh, and that's where he ended up. But yeah, it also might have been intentional. Um, Maximus giving Mori the jacket. Um, Rick says, good and bad are artificial constructs. Um, I thought that speech was pretty good. Um, them talking there. Uh, we go to the, we go to the palace of wherever, I don't know, of World Ender. Forever. Yeah, who knows why he's camped out there. Everyone using their powers. We get to see them one by ghost one. Ghost train. Yeah. Oh, my just God. Someone's a ghost train to break it open. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't, yeah, we referenced this line. I only lost 400 ants. My queen is laying more. I am back to 1 million ants. Yeah. <laughs> that is like my favorite. It might that be like, I mean, it's so rest. good. It's really good. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Rick taking out the gun turrets. Um, he, so he like, that was really zany. Like he like jumped in front of it. Like I, I like it. It was that. very zany. Yeah. The thing he uses to like wake himself up 
it, it's like a little creature. Like, what is like, that? <laughs> oh like, yeah, some it's kind like of weird eye drops. What is his? It's name? like a yeah. sentient. Uh, yeah, like everything Rick does that he like uses for a specific. It's like sentient. It's like a little animal thing, and it like yeah, it was very weird. Um, hey everybody, the ghost train guy would have used a ghost train. I love that. No, the way he makes fun of them yeah. is just like so. It's so amazing. good. Like yeah. he just trolls them. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah, it's good. Uh, well, we we show up and World Ender is dying. Well, it's official. I had too much to drink last night. Um, which I guess is an okay line to close the act, but it's also just the entire joke of the second when we come back from commercial. So it didn't. Uh, it's, it's a little bit of. Well, my favorite bit is like him realizing that he left his gun. His portal oh, gun. Yeah, yeah. Shit. yeah, he's like, oh, crap. Yeah, and like the sink it's with all the throw up. Yeah, it was, it was, that's, that's a good, and then it's like one drop from the sink. It was good. Um, are you seriously sawing the Vindicators? <laughs> Morty, I'm drunk, not a hack. And then, uh, recorded, uh, Rick's Just like, like in saw. saw. Yeah. <laughs> that was really good. Yeah, I liked that. Are you seriously sawing the Vindicators? Yeah, I like the, using it as a verb. It's really good. Um, uh vance uh he's uh he's uh it's this is, uh, i do sexy drinking not this uh trailer park psycho shit um <laughs> that was a pretty drink. good line and uh vance, vance says this is triggering me i need space yeah. what do we think what do we think really? about them using triggering played for straight in this in a rick and morty episode this is, i will say they said um heroes of color and um triggering here uh, it did seem a little out of place relative. This did definitely seem more progressive Rick and Morty. Yes, which is interesting. But then they still did murder everyone horrifically. I mean, it's so, still Rick I and mean, Morty, but like yeah. they're using the language a little bit, like this uh, kind of progressive discourse language. Um, potentially makes sense given the oh, there's an article up. Um, forget which website, but uh, maybe Variety. I don't know. With uh, the new female uh, writers on Rick and Morty. Um, in the, yeah. the writing crew is pretty great. And uh, I was just interviewing them. And maybe that's a little bit of the influence here is making uh, us less of an all male writers room. And now we have this type of language. This episode is written by two of the, the new female writers. Um, but yeah, I, what, what, what are we making? Fun, so like, what are we making fun of here with the, this is triggering me? Are we making fun of like, I don't even remember. I'm not sure this joke landed. I just remember I, I was like, Oh, it's not really okay. specifically a joke. Like that was a joke. Are we making fun yeah. of the trigger, the triggering like concept? Are we making fun of Vance? Yeah, what, what was like, triggering him? I don't even remember. Just what was the, the situation. Well, well, all of it. He's just yeah, getting stressed. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think they were just making fun of him because yeah. he's like, the yeah, worst. I think they're making fun of him. It is. It's definitely notable, but I don't think, I don't think they thought that much about it i think it's like okay we can just use this line but um right. yeah it was very interesting i didn't expect to ever hear triggering in rick and morty like in a serious way so interesting but yeah he flies up and then we have the grizzly scene of him getting like saw like sawed in half and yeah a long time <laughs> why so long <laughs> were you triggered by that scene michelle is that what you're saying no i'm just like <laughs> wasting valuable animation frames on this he's already dead why is it flying up is he gonna write something on the sling his blood nope that's not it at all oh it's finally over that was my thought process watching it you, i like the play by play on that what do you like more that or the uh violent sequence against the rats last week Oh, that was way better. Okay, you like that? Okay, interesting. I had one of my favorite lines. No, just like the whole like him fighting and goring all these rats. That was really cool, though. It was like action pickle rig. Okay, that's like more an action sequence. I think. Well, there that was like last week was like an action parody. This is like a horror parody, I guess. So that's that's what we're going for there. It's like yeah, it's like that, and also superheroes. And also, <laughs> they were all just okay, guys. Avengers, but in saw. Yeah, and in saw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's an interesting choice, but um, yeah, I like that. Uh. It, um, they they get out of the first room. It was a bit. All the descriptors apply to all of you. Drunk Rick's point is that none of you are, are very special or different. That's always his point. So sad when he says yeah. that. Yeah, no, it was like, oh. Yeah. They also never give Morty props for saving them literally every time. Yeah. yeah. I guess he doesn't shoot the three-pointers, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, he does disarm the bomb. Yeah, <laughs> it's very important. Oh yeah, too. well, did, did they? I don't even know if they end up. The, yeah, but it's that's true. But Morty's basically doing everything every room. Next room is pick a location uh, that uh, you'd never mention. Crocky about things is Dorian Five, where they exterminated a planet. The only way to kill Doom Namatron. Uh, Doom Namatron, yeah. incredible. Yeah, Crocky about's like this must be right. Like my <laughs> my reptilian and my He's circ. So yeah. sure. <laughs> Bob. yeah it's good and then but no more he's like no it's israel uh this, so this is what rick starts talking about when he's blackout drunk 
Uh, in a way that, uh, what's my point? In a way that has no point, you just babble about defense budgets in the United Nations and then you pass out. Uh, Rick, so to be clear, I sometimes reference the geopolitical, geopolitical complexities of the topic, which is not the same as going to an anti-Semitic place. Um, if anything, the drunk version of me is so supportive of Israel. And then, uh, a million ants is like, Hey man, I'm not touching this. <laughs> you do you. <laughs> it was so funny. Uh, it was so great. Yeah. Such a random, he's another, that joke doesn't have to do with anything. It's like the only one of the rooms, which like is clearly not related to, I guess the next one is shooting three pointers. So I guess he su- subsequently got off topic, but, um, no, he's just, he's his, like, his hell of drunkenness is showing. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. No, he just gets drunker and <laughs> yeah, you drunker. You saw the descent, drunker, but, um, it was a joke definitely not related to anything, but it's just really great. I think this is, this is my funniest moment of the episode is, is no, it's quality. The, the drama. Yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just Rick is like, yeah, Rick's like afraid of of this too. Yeah, yeah. no, it's so funny. Like, uh, yeah, Morty's like, yeah, this is just what you babble about when you're drunk. Oh my god, I, I, I love that. And then uh, just to make it even better is Million Ants reacting to it. <laughs> you better not try to touch this. So, yeah, so and he's like, yeah, even though Million Ants would have no concept of of this, yes. I guess he, I guess Million Ants could be from the ants from Earth. We know what's the origin story. A million ants. Are there alien ants? Yeah, are they like, aliens or they earth ants? So we need to talk about it. But yeah, him reacting to that. You do you. Yeah, that was great. That was another, I think that was another progressive discourse line. But that's not, that's more of just urban slang as you do you. But yeah. Um, I, I, I just, I just very much love that, that section. Um, next, next room is the, we talked about the hit the three point is the neutrino bomb. Michelle mentioned that. He just doesn't care anymore. Yeah. He's just like, <laughs> try to, uh, try to, some yeah, three pointers. Real. Yeah. Um, try to find some meaning. Try to learn something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about things. Yeah. Too many, Rick. Too many. Uh, that's a good line too. Uh, let's get into the sequence of the marriage drama <laughs> with, um, oh my God. Supernova, Million Ants, and, um, and uh alan rails yeah uh not married anymore um i'm just a phantom train conductor you're the pile of ordinary bugs that fucked my wife says <laughs> alan rails <laughs> oh that explains is it so it's it's normal ants it's just a queen <laughs> who can reproduce it's like hella fast so they can become a man. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Prob- I mean, it's gay. I understand. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe. Probably the queen is. Oh, yeah, because it's a queen. So maybe. <laughs> I mean, it's a male voice. <laughs> okay. But yeah. Question um, mark. The, the, I guess, maybe they're all worker ants. Yeah, Mich- Michelle's knows? point is that it's really the queen doing all the work here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, as, yeah, as gets yeah, tor- killed the queen. Yeah, torn out at the end. The and then to die. The rest of the collapse. Yeah. Um, did you like his six million wriggling legs more than my tragedy stricken <laughs> half ghost, half tumescent penis? Uh, if you name your penis tragedy stricken, I mean, I think you've already I think lost it's, the I think contest, he's de- I don't right? think it's named. I think he's describing it. Like the rest of him is tragedy well, stricken. That, so. the, well, yeah, that's what the, I mean, though. Yeah. Like with, um, when Rick was making fun of them, like the first room, it was like tragic origin yeah, yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, though. Yeah, you're right. That was his thing. Yeah, so I was all his things. But yeah, um, this this is my choice for second best line of the episode. Is did you? And it, you know, it's, it's totally not even audible. Like, did you like his six yeah, his six million wriggling legs more than my tragedy stricken half ghost half tumescent penis? <laughs> Um, and then another great line. I conceived a child with oh a mi- yeah. with million ants, and it it died inside me because it was a half million ants <laughs> and half collapsing star. <laughs> It was so good. Oh my this god! Is a really underrated section. Like this is such a great sequence here. I think it almost makes the episode on its own. Um, uh, he was a million. Well, it just like slowly descends yeah. into like just ridiculousness yeah. because like it starts off like they're like shooting the hoops, they're talking, and then like uh, he, get, like, he gets angrier and angrier, it's and he's like dribbling guy. the ball. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, um, I'm a million times better. Uh, all aboard, motherfucker. <laughs> um, so good. Then uh, Million Ants just blows up. Uh, Did he eat him? I couldn't figure out what was going on. He like went inside him with all of his ants <laughs> and like blew him <laughs> up from the inside with the power of the Million Ants. It was actually more gory to me than the first guy getting cut up by whatever was in that vent. So that's his power. He yeah. can explode people. By <laughs> he can explode people and like grow in size when he wants to, I guess. I feel like you just, he just I don't think he grew in size. He just put the ants inside and then displaced them by ripping him out of him so he was like ripped <laughs> apart from the inside that's pretty impressive for a bunch of <laughs> so you're, you're, you're like, impressed by i mean also the fact I'm, that it's like a sentient and they can talk you know that's also pretty impressive right yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> okay i'm glad we- <laughs> yeah that yeah it's just that sequence like, oh my god you actually fell in love with oh him, so you, you're also falling in love with him. <laughs> 
No, I'm still the Phantom Train Girl. Oh yes. <laughs> If you're a million ants, you might have a chance with Michelle. That's the way to. Yes! <laughs> no, she said you have to be a ghost. <laughs> you, have to make, you, have to make, you have to be a ghost trans. That's what she said. But yeah. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> too hot in here for this nonsense. <laughs> too hot in here for this nonsense. But yeah. Uh, but, yeah but no, but you, uh, it's understand. Yeah, Michelle's like, oh, it's understandable why. <laughs> My supernova likes million ants <laughs> can explode people from the inside. It's impressive. Oh my god. Okay. Um yeah, Rick uh just uh, I don't even know where to go from that scene. But yeah, the uh the one the, the next room one the one vindicator with any value to me. Um they're like, Oh, it could be Morty. I'm not being coy about some hidden love for you. Um and then he goes in this whole like ride and it's like, You're different, noob noob, you're fucking <laughs> cool and you're smart. Um that whole sequence, yeah. It, it's pretty great. <laughs> I don't... And he's just like, like, oh, uh, just the look on his face. Also, he made us like he made it's a small world. Like that's what he did. Yeah, and yeah. he did that when it was drunk. I was like, this is some crazy stuff. Like it's a little amusement park ride, and then the room with like, I guess they're like opening hands with the rainbow, and I was like, holy shit. And then it was for Noob Noob. Oh my god, it was so good. That was hands down one of my favorite parts of the episode. Like. Drunk Rick is even pettier than normal Rick. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah it's uh, it, it was good. Um, and then right after, even more follow up with um the million ants and um supernova <laughs> coupling. Um, she's like starts choking them, and then uh, supernova says, "Just let Titty Bean do the snuzzles. It's for the greater good." It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like they just keep referencing it. That's like the best part. Yeah. Damn, she double cross snuzzles oh, at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, was, that, that, that might be my favorite line. Of the whole, aside from now, it's like I'm back to a million ants. I love like oh no. Yeah, it was so it's good. really good. Um, we are we are getting some good licks in while choking to death, says Rick. Oh, I liked that too. That was yeah, good. that was good. Yeah, uh, that. Well, I liked it because like I had already was like they're being like really sassy and they're dying, yeah. and then he said that. Like, this is so yeah, good. they're aware. Yeah. A million ants speech about how Supernova taught him to be a man. Okay, he says he taught him to be a man. There's your answer to Oh my god. Um, and then, but so what prompts Supernova to kill him? Because yeah, I kind of, kind like, of nothing. Just... She wanted to kill. I mean, because like he was in the way, and she was just like determined to murder them. Was it, is it that the takeaway? She was. She wanted them all dead. Like. She want she didn't want her like ant boo to die, but like he was stopping her from doing something she her thought she wanted to do. Aunt, I mean, I, I'm assuming. And then, <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. I, I mean, I guess it's better than like snuzzles. <laughs> yes, it is. I you're, you're bidding, say that. bearing lead of titty bean here. Come on, like <laughs> yeah, no titty bean is <laughs> best. Like, what does it even what mean? Are you talking about? Yeah. Um, I guess, yeah, I guess he was trying to stop her. She doesn't even have titties. Like, what? <laughs> she does. If she does, she, does she have any real body part or they are like ephemeral? Yeah. yeah. That's a, that's yeah a I just big like, question. What? yeah. So that was, uh, yeah, rip ant, rip a uh, million ants. Um, would have loved to have seen her return a million ants, but no, I guess not. Yes. And then the party at the end, there's Logic, who's a real person and, um, <laughs> Apparently popular on YouTube. <laughs> apparently popular on YouTube and stuff. I don't know. Uh, Rick playing this whole party when he was drunk. Supernova's getting away, so Supernova could return. We can put her in our yeah, maybe. in our. She was like dancing away. We, yeah, <laughs> we can put her in our uh, potential returnees basket along with Annie from that one season one episode. And um, I don't even know who, uh, who else did I even put anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, then there's Gearhead, Beth, and Summer are there. Um, oh, so yeah, I love Summer there. Song. For some reason, yeah. Summer. Like Summer going like <laughs> like Rick must have been shit faced. <laughs> like I love that. Like that is like that's that might that's like my number three fave line. It was so funny. Like I was, oh, uh, it's like so great. That's that's what really like sealed the end of the episode for me. Yeah. Also, I think I I didn't appreciate like I don't know logic, so I didn't appreciate that. But his original noob noob rap, I did appreciate. That was <laughs> yes. No, that was great. <laughs> Uh, it was it was pretty good. I was enjoying the noob noob rap. Salt to the wounds of Morty's yeah. life. <laughs> yeah, basically <laughs> a song and everything. Yeah, Gearhead takes the jacket and then um, pays off in the stinger when uh, Gearhead so Gearhead good. is getting gear cream. Uh, they're getting gear cream with a vindicator. Um, so you girls in gear college or gear? Yeah, no, I, that was really funny. <laughs> 
<laughs> I like that a lot too. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, it seems in character for Gearhead. He seems like a creep. So that, that, yeah. yeah, no, hundred percent. He, then he runs off and trips and breaks. Is Gearhead dead, Delaney? He's well, dead they're made out of gears. Yeah, if the gears like were like thing. he like falls apart. Yeah. He could just be repaired, right? Like yeah, he's yeah, fine. Yeah, I think we like bringing back Gearhead too much, but um, yeah. The, <laughs> The stinger, I, I mean, I just, I love Gearhead and any stingers. I think he had a stinger before too. But um, yeah, the, the line is, so you girls in Gear College, or yeah, so that was um, that's good. What do we, what do we, Michelle? Yeah, Michelle, what do you think of just ending the episode in a party like this? I think we talked about this before. I mean, I think it was. F- I mean, if they didn't want to deal with like the last person who could kill them, this was a great way to do it because like the public display being like awkward enough that she just leaves and like gives it up i think it's like pretty funny and the fact that again like the whole joke of like rick being able to accomplish so much while being so shit-faced like he organized the whole party and got this like rapper to sing a song about noob noob it's just like that gap just continues to the end and i think it, it was pretty funny and it, it wasn't like a huge surprise i thought it, like made sense it feels very rick and morty <laughs> way to end an episode yeah yeah did you enjoy it delaney no, I thought it was great. Like when it was a party, I was like, "This is I'm back. This is good." Yeah, yeah, it is. And I like bringing, I like just randomly bringing in Beth and Summer. I think that was good. And Gearhead, good person too to bring in there. Um, apparently, there's a lot of other old characters from the background, so I got to go check that out. I need to freeze frame it. See, see who's at the party. Um, yeah, that's it. Next week is our Rick and Jerry adventure. Everyone, we'll oh need to get God. Delaney's opinions on the Jerry adventure. <laughs> Delaney, are you excited? <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm excited because Rick is just gonna shit on him the whole episode. Yeah, like that's, that's what I'm waiting for. It's a Rick and Jerry adventure, Rick and Jerry episode. He says, I don't know why again. Rick, oh knew, Rick knows it's an episode, but yeah, it's a Rick and Jerry episode. Um, is this is this was a pity adventure? Uh, what do you think it was? An execution? Jeez, <laughs> uh, you really do need to win. That was from the promo. That's so good. I love Jerry that. Thought it's a, I'm Jerry ready. Thought it's gonna be an execution. Oh my god. Yeah. So let let the hype uh, hype build for the Rick and Jerry episode, the Whirly Durly conspiracy coming next week. Oh god. Yeah. Also written by Ryan Ritt. Who's ready to just listen to me bitch oh, yeah. about Jerry? Got, yes. We're bo- yeah, we're Absolutely. booking Delaney for that recap next week. But, uh, <laughs> written by Ryan Ridley, who's wrote a lot of the best episodes of the show as well, so I'm very excited for that. So, um, hype for Jerry, Michelle? Hype for what happens to Jerry. Hype, okay. <laughs> hype, hype, hype. I'm no, ready hype for Jerry himself. Hype for the treatment of Jerry noted. Okay, so yeah, we'll be back uh, covering Whirly Jerry Conspiracy. We'll have our panel coming up later this week. Um, any closing thoughts on Vindicators 3? I, I do think, especially going over it line by line, very funny episode. What do you think, Delaney? I think it was super funny. I just like... I just don't think it was as good, like as solid and as kind of impressive as the previous two episodes, but... I do think it was really funny, and I think it was potentially funnier than the previous two episodes, but I, in overall quality, I don't think it's as good. Michelle? Yeah, I'd agree with that. Like, it, it was using tropes that weren't as original as Pickle Rick, but it did have, like, a lot of, like, standalone standout lines, maybe more so than the last one. So, yeah. It, it was a good time. I enjoyed it. Was it was a good time. I think, so I think originally I was going to put this in the bottom tier. I have my upper tier, bottom tier of episodes. I think I was going to put it in its bottom tier, but then rewatching it, I think it's probably a, a bottom upper tier episode. So potentially the worst of the season so far, but still very good. Potentially we've, we've just had four top tier episodes of, of Rick and Morty so far this season. So, um, I still think season three is great. Um, I think this episode is very funny and, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, definitely give it another watch. We'll be, back here on the overly animated podcast with our panel discussion later in the week you can check that out at overlyanimated.com or subscribe to us on itunes uh, for our feed thank you guys for checking us out please comment we don't get a lot of feedback on these podcasts please comment on what you thought of our discussion um what you like that we talk about what you like to see more of i'm definitely open to all that feedback and um you can also if you very much enjoyed you can very, consider supporting us at patreon patreon.com slash overly animated thank you very much to all of our patrons especially our patron of the podcast lily aka panda lily thank you as always for your support and thanks always to our patron executive producers john ryan steve alex and andy um upcoming on our podcast are the panel discussion as mentioned and then a bunch of other animation talk we just had a ducktales uh recap featuring michelle go up very similar shows Ooh. ducktales and rick and morty um right yep <laughs> Yep, we just yes. finished our Voltron coverage. That's more of a similar show, but not really. But um, 
think Rick and Morty people would appreciate Voltron, at least. Uh, we just finished our Season 3 Voltron coverage and a bunch more stuff coming up at OverlyAnimated.com. We cover a bunch of animated shows, so check us out there. Thank you guys very much for listening. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.